you know, I wouldn't mind betting this is your idea of Texas. A home where the buffalo roam, all that kind of thing. Well, 150 years ago, there weren't even one-room shacks like this around these here parts. Now look at it. This is Houston, the city that makes Dallas look like Doncaster. And we're here for Rendezvous Houston, which we've been promised will be the biggest show ever produced on the planet. Modest to a fault, these people, as you'll see. Jean-Michel, tell me, what are these people actually doing on the side of this building? They appear to be hanging out laundry or something. Yeah, that's it? right, exactly. It's, it, it looks looks like much more Napolitan than uh, American, actually. <laughs> like that, with all these uh, things hanging around. What are they doing? The idea is to cover this building uh, with a white screen, yeah. with a patch made uh, of various pieces, to project from uh, the tower. So that's, that's that tower over there, that? Yeah, yes. Right. Big tower. Some uh, uh, big projections, big images. What, uh, what sort of images? Uh, they have, uh, I mean, they are done handmade on a uh, kind of big version of, uh, of a regular slides. Yeah. But much bigger, about two feet yeah. wide. Yeah. So how long has this actually been in the planning stage? In about uh, one, one, I mean, one year ago, the city of Houston asked me to try to think about uh, something special for the celebration of their 150th anniversary. Had you well had dealings with Houston before? I mean, uh, what was your connection with this no, place? No, no. I mean, uh, apart from Claire Ips and uh, Jim, John Wayne's movie, yeah, nothing. Yeah. I never went in Texas before. And uh, when I went uh, into Houston, I really fell in love with the, uh, the skyline of downtown Houston. I think it's totally unique, even in the even, uh, United States. And uh, it sounded to me that it could be an ideal place to put together a kind of metropolis concept yeah. in terms of an event. What was your first move when you decided to do this, this kind of show? I mean, to be in contact with uh, various people of the city to try to uh, explain them to them what was the, the idea. Yeah. And uh, then to be in contact with, uh, with NASA, because we, I had uh, a good friend for a while, uh, an astronaut who called Bruce McCandless. I, yeah. knew, I knew him before the, all, all, what I, all what happened. And uh, he, uh, he's been amazingly creative and uh, enthusiastic about the whole project. And he introduced me to uh, one of his best friends, Ron McNair. Yeah. And uh, we got the idea together to, for the celebration, I mean, here, yeah, to, to uh, try to uh, put together music in space. I mean, to, for me to write a piece of music that could be played by uh, Ron McNair on, on his saxophone, because he's a good sax player as well as a high-level scientist, yeah. uh, to uh, uh, record this piece of music in the shuttle, to uh, shoot it also, and to uh, play back the result of it on the, on the screen. Yeah. It's actually a totally different concept than a regular show, I mean a regular rock show. I mean, the audience will be uh, in a lot of different places, on top of various buildings. So they're uh, going to be the beyond park, that behind, freeway over Yes, there. behind the, the freeway yeah, over there. In the publicity, you're advising people to bring radios. Why, why should they bring radios? Because, because to avoid uh, a delays problem for the sound, we, are, um, uh, we have a simulcast with a local radio station, and we are going to use the FM uh, as... Uh, so the people are going to be sitting there yes, listening to it on the radio. That's right, and they can, they can bring their radio and uh, getting the headphones, uh, the headphones and getting uh, the, the music live and in sync with the images. And this stage in itself is uh, only one element of the show. I mean, the show is not only the, the, the stage, but also the rest of the skyline. So I'm, I'm going to, to conduct the music as well as the lighting, because it's so connected, it's so in, it has to be yeah. uh, done in sync. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a fairly new, new concept uh, in terms of, of show to be able to play with light as well as instruments. For instance, these instruments, uh, this kind of keyboard or xylophone. Yeah, is, what uh, it looks like, isn't it? Uh, is, uh, you, can, you, can, you are able, with this keyboard, to control uh, lighting as well as sound. So how many people are involved altogether? It's, uh, we're talking about around 200 people coming yeah. from Europe, yeah. Well, the charm of that is, is actually it's, it's a real European concept yeah. also, putting in America. I mean, a lot of French, but also a lot of English, Italian, Germans involved. Uh, because also we have developed in Europe uh, a lot of different techniques. And in France, for instance, we have developed a lot of uh, 
visual technique. When you see this tower with projectors, gun lights, yeah. they've been done and created in France uh, by by a lot of, um, I mean, by a bunch of very talented graphic artists. And uh, the, all these techniques, for instance, the, the fireworks techniques, is very different from uh, from what they, they usually see in this country. In this country, the the, 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 uh, I mean, the best fireworks is the loudest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in Europe, more we are more, more used to uh, uh, things, I mean, uh, more subtle yeah, in a way. Yeah. And the fireworks we are going to, to, to use is totally synchronized with, with the city. And the guy acting the fireworks is on stage also. And he will, he will control his fireworks through a video screen, a monitor yeah. video yeah. Uh, from the stage to uh, control the various uh, fireworks on top of various buildings. They're going to be on top of the buildings as well, the fireworks. Yes, that's right. These days, we have to recognize that the, uh, the pure rock concert as a format is starting to fading out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's maybe because uh, we are uh, discovering visual be before the sound with videos and television mm. and, and mm. movies on, on music. And uh, I think uh, we are going now for the 20 until the, the beginning of the 21st century into a, a new age in terms of, of show I mean using the tools of these days I mean with lasers and videos and uh, uh, and projections and lighting synchronized with with sound uh, it's time to integrate that in in uh, in, uh, in a show and if you think of it since the 60s a lot of uh, I mean a rock show is more or less the same. I mean, there is not a lot of difference between the, the early uh, Elvis Presley type of shows and, and uh, rock shows of these days. I mean, the look is different, the sound is different, but the format is, yeah. is, uh, yeah. is the same, more or less. Yeah. We are talking uh, in Houston about something entirely different. I mean, uh, about something that uh, uh, covers a lot more uh, fields. I mean, we are we are working with painters, with uh, uh, with plumbers for the, for lasers, with uh, lighting engineers, uh, with people from NASA. I mean, this is very exciting. Channel 2, KPRC-TV, Houston. Well, if the rain holds off, Houston's annual Rite of Spring should be a very good one. Houston Festival 86 is underway. This is KHOU-TV, Houston. Well, Houston's skyline is about to be transformed into a backdrop for the biggest laser light show ever seen in America. KRIB-TV, Houston. Crews continued working downtown today, setting the stage for Saturday's spectacular show of lights, lasers, fireworks, and music. It's called Rendezvous Houston, a city in concert. Now, Channel 13, Eyewitness News. Well, it's being called everything from the show of shows to the biggest concert in history, and officially, it is known as Rendezvous Houston, a laser and light show that's going to use downtown buildings as the stage. Jean-Michel Jarre is rehearsing his synthesizer group on the 18th floor of an unfinished skyscraper. The setting is eerie, but appropriate. The composer of the future is about to meet the city of the future. Houston, we've got confirmation. Nine seconds to lift off. 